Hello, everybody, and welcome back to First Ring Daily. It is Friday, which means it is a, uh, a live show, and all calamity is not edited out because that's what we do on Fridays. Sorry. <laughs> How you doing? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm holding it together. I think is, uh, I think that's the appropriate way to describe what's going on today. But before we dive in, uh, today's show is brought to you by Cladbury Lab. We'll have a little bit more about them, but check them out at cladburylab.com slash FRD. So, um, oh, you know, Miracast. <laughs> Just. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did I even put in the show notes today? It was just running on all cylinders today. I did something today I very rarely do, which is me? I consulted the show notes ahead of the show. Wow. Yeah. A couple of um, ruin the surprise moments. Um, you picked two really cynical comments out of our little bucket of comments today. <laughs> really cynical. Cynical or true? Yeah, it can be both. Yeah, I think so too. That's kind of why they're there. Kind of why they're there. Uh, speaking of things that are going to be there, it looks like Chrome notifications are going to be coming to the Windows 10 Action Center finally. Yeah, you know, I don't know, it's a week or two ago when Google Chrome notifications switched over to that little box in the corner, um, which looks closer to native than it used to. You know, it used to be like in browser. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody, we, we must have written it up to some capacity. I'm sure Mahedi wrote it up or whatever, but... Um, Somebody commented at the time, like, oh, it's great, but, you know, when are, when are the real notifications going to come? And it's like, well, actually, I sort of view this as a step toward that goal. And now they're actually doing a native notification. So yep, I think that's that's good news for everybody. I, I don't, you know, so, someone today on Twitter was like, thank God. You know, like this has been the, <laughs> the thing holding them back from a, like a, a, you know, a fully realized existence online. Right. But, um, uh, you know, great, right? So we do a lot of stuff in, in our browsers. If you use Chrome, obviously, this is mm -hmm. big news. So that's good. Yeah. Um, and on another side note, if you're using Chrome and you get those notifications and they're annoying, they're going to be more annoying in more other places uh, once they make their way into the Action Center. Yeah. I uh, right, I yesterday discussed how I was going to blow away my Surface laptop and install Windows 10s on there and get on the Insider Preview, which I did do last night. It, that's exciting stuff, I know. But the thing I was doing before that was experimenting with different kind of UI changes. And one of the things I did is um, you can install that Startup tool, Start 10, which is a, you know mm -hmm. can change the Start menu. But it actually does some other stuff. Like one of the things you can do is turn on different levels of transparency on the taskbar. You can turn off the start button. You can in Windows 10, just I think just in the native tools, turn off uh, Action Center. Let me check. Uh, maybe that no, maybe that's in there too. But I, I basically kind of made this minimalist um, toolbar because I, I use the keyboard for a lot of things. So if I'm going to use right. uh, search or start menu, or whatever, I'm going to use the keyboard. I'm, I'm, I very rarely go over and click that button, you know. So I was, <laughs> it sort of occurred to me like. Um, I, I mentioned this only because you mentioned the Action Center, which I never use. I think it's terrible and pointless. But, um, <laughs> you know, once you minim you make kind of a minimalist start mm -hmm. or a taskbar, rather, you sort of go down this path where you're like, you know what would be cool is if, um, like, the, the, the application icons, maybe they could move to the middle of the screen. And then maybe the, actually the taskbar could just be completely transparent. You wouldn't even see it. And then maybe if you moused over the icons, they would actually kind of magnify, you know? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Maybe they could have like these animations if you right clicked on them, maybe in a kind of a spiral pattern of some kind. Um, Here's a crazy idea. What if they also <laughs> then put some of the context menus up at the very top of the window? Yes, yes. Actually, yeah. maybe just always have a menu at the top of the screen, no matter what application you're running. It's, it's an X. That's, yeah. Someone should do that. That's yeah, really, really smart. Should. It'd be interesting. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if consumers would like it, but... Um... <laughs> I'm sure at least 7% of them would love it. <laughs> oh, boy. This, on today's episode of What Are They Really Talking About? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, God. It's just no, there's just no end in sight, folks. Mm -hmm. this is I know, the, I'm sorry. Uh, like I said, I'm sorry. Yeah. But are you really... Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah. Anyways, uh. <laughs> it's your sorry doesn't mean the same thing if you laugh after you say it. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, another Black Ops is that? I saw that their Call of Duty 
thing came out. So I'm surprised that they're yeah. not following in the theme of the other one that was World War II or whatever, World War well, One. Well, yeah, right. Um, they, they're in a weird situation now because Activision has three different studios making games. So every third year, it's the same studio again. Mm -hmm. um, the studio that's coming up is, I think it's called Sledgehammer. And I think... I, Thing. but whoever it is they're the guys that did black ops before so three years ago black ops 3 came out um black ops was the last successful series that they did right obviously they call of duty started out with uh, world war ii games mm -hmm. they moved to modern warfare for three very successful games and then they moved to black ops for three very successful games but um intermixed in there because at different times there were two and then three different studios making the games you know, they tried uh, three other series starters, Ghosts, um, Advanced Warfare, and Infinite Warfare. And all of those things kind of failed pretty miserably. And, you know, they're running, it's like they're basically running out of ideas. I mean, it, it's, it's interesting. Black Ops is interesting on a number of levels. Like, I think the, the World War II game has succeeded on, uh, uh, because of a couple things. One is a return to classic gameplay. Mm -hmm. Um and the other one is just a return to the the classic setting. I think there's kind of a nostalgia factor there, and it's they've done a nice job with it. You know, it's 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 really well done. But the the thing that's interesting about Black Ops is that the last game, Black Ops Three, is the only version of a black uh, a Call of Duty game where they actually had like jetpacks and wall running that was actually kind of awesome. Like the other two that did that, Advanced and Infinite Warfare, were both terrible. Um, and actually, Black Ops Three multiplayer is one of the best multiplayer experiences ever. And so I'm curious if they're going to try to split the game up so that you could choose um, not maps, but I guess game types that, you know, are classic or not classic game style. So, I, you know, it, it's, I, I feel sort of bad for them because they it, clearly they've tried to come up with new ideas and none of those new ideas work. So they just keep doing the same thing over and over again. So I think 2019, you can fully expect to see Modern Warfare 4. Why not? Yeah. The games yeah, keep making a lot of money, so it's um, kinda, yeah, kind of hard. To well, that's the that thing. Way. Like some of these games, you know, the, the, these games cost as much as a movie to make, really, right? And they take years to make. And uh, I think it was Advanced Warfare was the one that they actually ha hired Kevin Spacey to be an actor in the game. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that the single player experience is like the big part of these games. I don't quite understand the emphasis on that because if you look at how they handle DLC. I'm sure there are occasional small updates for multiplayer, but it's not like you've ever heard, you know, there's a new chapter in the story coming out as right. part of a DLC pack. Like, it's all multiplayer stuff. And uh, I think, that, you know, over the course of a year, I think that's where people all spend their time. Um, Call of Duty should just focus, they should just go straight up multiplayer. I don't even, but why bother with these stupid stories? You know, it doesn't even make any sense. Like, let's tell the World War II story again, you know. Great. Oh, yeah, you know, I wonder how it's going to end this time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, I I don't disagree. Um, I don't think I've actually played through a Call of Duty campaign actually since uh, Black Ops One. I want to <laughs> well, say. I mean, uh, I used to play through all of them and, and often multiple times. But you know, I did finish World War Two. I I did redo Modern Warfare Remastered, but Infinite Warfare I never finished. Um, Advanced Warfare I never finished. And by the way, Black Ops Three, as good as the multiplayer was. I never got anywhere in the single player. I was I, I was bored stiff. Like I just I couldn't believe how terrible it was, and um, I just I don't know. I've gone full circle on this stuff. I used to spend all my time right up front playing single player. They get in, into multiplayer later, and now single player is just an afterthought. I don't even I kind of don't even care, you know, for the most part. It's kind of how I'm feeling today. <laughs> yes. Yep. Yep. Mostly because I got a I got a. You know, I'm looking at next week's calendar already, and it's like, man, mm -hmm. next week's already over. It's. I'm sorry. It's. Um, I'm going to procrastinate and pretend next week isn't going to happen, and I'm just going to ride the wave until then, because my my wife and my daughter are both gone. They're in Boston. Oh. And uh, my only real responsibility is I have to make sure the dog gets outside, <laughs> you know, for various <laughs> reasons. Yep. Um. So yeah. That's good. Speaking of outside, Paul, uh, mm -hmm. Microsoft's Mixed Reality has a new uh, spring environment because that's, <laughs> that's what the people yeah. want. Yeah. Um, it's funny. Uh, when Windows Mixed Reality first came out and they have this, it's like a house. It, it, it's sort of their start menu for the game. Is It's a house. It's like a virtual house. You walk around and whatever. And I, I don't know. There's something really... 
low tech about this to me. Like I, I, you know, you can decorate the walls with things and stuff. It's kind of goofy. And then, of course, um, Steam VR support showed up on Windows Mixed Reality, so I checked that out. And as it turns out, and a lot of people know this, Steam VR does the same thing. They have a little house. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, it's just it's the same. It's the same thing. So, yep. I guess in the context of that, uh, offering a little variety is okay. But I don't know. <laughs> this the, the the notion of virtually navigating through a home to find the thing you want to do. I don't know. If I was going to use this a lot, I think I'd just stack up tiles right there in the front and mm. let the rest of the house get dusty. Would you, would you like those tiles to be interactive and um, um, not dead? No, I don't care. In fact, <laughs> um, <laughs> I just want to get into the app. I, right. I, there, it's, I think there's a, a timer that starts when you put on a VR headset, right? Because you can't be in there for a long time. So the notion that I'm going to put this thing on and then casually hang around a house and watch as live tiles update with little weather icons or something is ludicrous, right? Like I want to go in, start the thing I'm going to do, do it, and then take that thing off. I don't know. I'm going to come back. Anyway, it's cool. Variety's good. I'm not, you know, I'm not complaining about it. I just think the environment's a little goofy. Come back to that in one second because we got to run through this real quick, folks. Mm -hmm. Uh, As we mentioned at the top of the hour, today's show, top of the hour, I guess top of the show, which was top of the hour, technically speaking, uh, is brought to you by Cloudberry Lab. Make sure to check them out, cloudberrylab.com slash FRD to find a better way to back up your data, put it on any cloud, protect yourself against ransomware, and it's really actually is beneficial. I know quite a few people who are listening to the show are now using it because you pick your data and put it wherever you want and pay whatever you want uh, because Amazon, Azure, and all those guys are changing prices frequently. Make sure you're not overpaying for data. Check out Cloudberry Lab uh, for all that good stuff. <clears throat> Paul, where <throat> I was headed with this yep. is Microsoft. I will, I've will. i said this before. Um, so this is Sea of Thieves. This is a screenshot from here. I was actually playing earlier a little bit with Tom Warren because I had no idea what I was doing. I just downloaded the free open beta. Mm-hmm. Uh, Microsoft is funding this. I believe they're funding it and uh they're they're a big producer of this game this is a play anywhere title i was playing it on my pc and it it's it's so far so good it's a very interesting game but mm-hmm. paul you know what would have been amazing absolutely amazing <laughs> is that if uh, i could put on a vr headset and explored the sea of thieves world but i can't right i think it's because mm. xbox doesn't have vr da, 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 da. au contraire my friend you can play this on the pc no, no, I know that. But I mean, maybe they didn't want the Windows version to be completely different or whatever. Well, I I don't, I, I disagree because I really want to put on a freaking Windows Mixed Reality headset and okay. stand like in the middle of this. Like it's, <clears throat> it's, yeah. I mean, it's pretty in its own kind of low polygon way. Like it's a very neat game so far. I do worry that there's not going to be enough to do to kind of keep interest long term, but to kind of go screw around with some friends. Um, it definitely seems like it has potential to be some good first party IP. Uh, definitely for Microsoft, but man, it's like they have all the pieces there and it's not like it needs to be a crazy mixed reality experience. I can use my keyboard and mouse and put that little headset on and then just look around. Like that's, that's all I want. And Microsoft will get 300 bucks out of me for a mixed reality headset. That's it. That, that's. I hear they're going for cheap now. I would, I would even go cheaper. Like I, that's, that's like the missing thing that Microsoft could do. To actually, actually, you know, maybe sell these things, but um, here we are. Here's some great first-party intellectual property coming to the Microsoft world, and they're pushing these mixed reality headsets, and yet they're still in those silos at Microsoft World, and we can't do that. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I just, Paul, I just want to get virtually seasick once, and they're not going to let me do it. Yep. Yeah, I missed my chance on Twitter. You asked, you know, what what are you supposed to do in this game? And I said, drown. What I should have said was <laughs> drown and then have someone lift your wallet from your carcass because obviously it's Sea of Thieves. Yes, pirating and um, yep. all that good yep. stuff. Although I will say I want to I play against some people on the Xbox because, um, well, con- keyboard and mouse versus controller. I think we know how that would fair but um it's worth mentioning that uh, you did kind of mention it in passing but the game is free like over i think over the weekend right for yeah. everybody so if you want to give it a shot to see what it's all about mm-hmm. this this is your chance it's free yep i believe don't quote me on this i thought the pc version was about 19 gigs um so don't download it over your uh, tethered wi-fi but um <laughs> yeah don't do it over your phone <laughs> right unless you want it to explode 
which in that case, make sure you're filming because uh, this is not a sponsored endorsement to burn your house down, but you know, we would like to watch your phone explode. <laughs> well, it will also help with the future lawsuit. No, we won't. Uh, anyways, <laughs> 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 moving on. Uh, speaking of phones, by the way, Paul, apparently Microsoft's going to be offering a Samsung Galaxy S9 Microsoft yeah. edition. For... I, I guess they've been doing this since last year. I kind of lost track of this, but um, obviously last, whatever it was, February, March, when the S8 came out, Microsoft was doing this. And it must have been in uh, April or whenever we went to build. I, I went over to the mall near the hotel, and they have a Microsoft kiosk there. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of like a store, like it's a little <clears> – <throat> like I think you'd buy popcorn at, except at this one you can buy Surface devices and stuff. And they, um, they had it there at the time. And then I kind of forgot about it. But, you know, remember Microsoft did that big deal with Samsung about a year and a half ago or so. And part of the deal was that their apps would be pre-bundled on – Samsung, certain Samsung devices, not just phones, but tablets and other devices. And um, I, apparently part of it's that Microsoft's going to be selling this, these devices. So if you want to get this thing at the Microsoft store, you can. Um, if it's like it was before, you're just buying a Samsung Galaxy S9. There's nothing special about it. But if you want to take it out of the box and get mm -hmm. it activated while you're in the store, uh, Microsoft could download an image to the phone that has their apps on it, and you can do it that way. Um, I assume... It's the same thing this time. Do we know that for a fact? Uh, we don't, but I can't <clears throat> imagine they're going to be doing anything different in this case. So that's yeah. I don't think they're going to be coming up with like a special version of the of the right. phone, right? Yep. Um, I wonder if this was a multi year deal or what's. I I have no idea. Yeah. Just because I'm. No, I, you know, Microsoft's smart to have offer phones sure. I mean, through the store. It's it's and you know if they get a customer in in person and they want to put stuff on the phone or whatever for them. That's smart. I mean, it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. And you know, it actually gets, um, foot, foot traffic into the store, which as we all know, uh, is not the strength of the Microsoft store. Yeah. And remember, it might've been as recently as a year ago. I mean, I, there was a thing at one time where Microsoft and Samsung had had this deal and mm -hmm. people were thinking, well, does this mean that Microsoft could run, you know, sell a version of the S8 that has Windows Mobile on it, and it's like, guys, <laughs> like seriously, nope. even a year ago that was ludicrous. Today, obviously, it's it's just possible. It's just that's not happening. But um, anyway, a, a a real phone with Microsoft apps on it is a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. So that's one way to get it. Yeah, I, I still don't know why you would do <clears throat> it personally. Um, yeah, I don't know either, but. It, like well, the thing that goes through my head is like, okay, so what's the advantage of buying it through there? So they will open the phone for you, they will load all the apps for you, and do all that stuff for you. But my gut tells me that if you're smart enough to know that Microsoft's selling a Microsoftified yeah. Samsung Galaxy S9, you already know how to do all that, and you probably like being the first person to touch your phone rather than some random person. <laughs> um, yeah, is your... there anything worse than someone else powering a new thousand you know, dollar yeah. device or whatever? Yeah. Right. That's yeah, I agree. Yeah, when I when I bought my iPhone seven at the store, the guy was like taking it out of the box. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa what are you doing? Like, I, I I will do this at home in my privacy, um, mm -hmm. you know, with Celine Dion playing in the background and some candles. Yes, I will, I will do this <laughs> myself. Candles. Thank you. Here's an idea: put the um, the device you just got your hands all over back in the box and give me a new one, and I will take that one home. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, true. I, I don't I don't get it, but um, you know, clearly they saw value. Actually, where I was going with that was that. Maybe they saw enough people with the S8 that they did it, or is it like they are contractually obligated to do it at this point, and that's why it's happening? It doesn't hurt anything. It's okay. Hurts my feelings, Paul. Hurts my feelings. <laughs> so, yep. All right, folks. One of the things we do here on Friday is take a look back at the comments, as Paul alluded to at the top of the show. And uh, the first one comes from, uh, his name is Stooks, and this is on the Windows 10 S mode changes. And he says, Microsoft... Please promise to make confusing changes to Windows, licensing, the store, UWP, and Skype at least twice a year. It's what customers have come to expect from you <laughs> at least once a year. Uh, also, oh, please man. cancel a product. Yep. It's, it's cynical. <clears throat> I like it, but it's, you know, it's cynical. I'm, I'm reminded, I, this has come up recently. I don't remember if I said this on a podcast or whatever, but years ago, when Microsoft was coming out with the Xbox 360, one of the little innovations that people kind of forget about is that previous to that, games would ship, and that was the game. You got a disc, and that was mm -hmm. it. There was no, there was nothing else coming. If there was a mistake on there, it was on there. There was no way to fix it. And so the Xbox 360, 
in, it included this download mechanism where gamer, you know, game makers could update their games over time. So, you know, that makes sense. It works like Windows Update does. It works like the, you know, the Windows Store, any mobile store does today. It, it, anyone can listen to that and think that makes sense. But as I said to whoever the person was I talked to at the time at Microsoft from Xbox, I was like, well, I mean, doesn't that sort of, you know, <laughs> mean that we're going to see lower quality products coming? I mean, knowing that they can update this thing at any time, mm -hmm. it seems like, you know, the initial version will always be crap. And uh, he said, no, and he said, no, that's not going to happen. We have a we have a big process at Microsoft to ensure quality, blah, 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 whatever. And um, obviously there are unforeseen things that can happen. Or you might want to just add to the game, whatever it is. And it, this is a net good thing. I was like, okay, that makes sense, you know. But the the way we the way things are today is now, now the platform makers are using the same mentality. It's like, well, we can update this thing every month. What's the difference, you know? Yep. We can ship a half-realized version of something. We can ship a version of Windows 10 last fall that has – one eighteenth of it in with restyled in this new fluent design, and then when the spring version comes out, we can do another thirty seven percent and um you know we'll just uh, we'll kind of make it up as we go along, <laughs> you know like this is the way the world has kind of evolved, so yeah. That's a tough trying to one. figure out how it's your fault, but um we're just gonna run into your fault. <laughs> I saw the apocalypse coming. that's all I'm saying, speaking of the ap apocalypse coming. Uh, the next one, so this is referring to the Amazon and uh, Cortana integration that has been delayed and Microsoft is now self-hosting. Judah Zook writes, he says, no timeline for release. I already know when it will be released and it's not a big secret. They will, they will release it uh, too late and when it's no longer relevant because that is what Microsoft is doing nowadays. That one is so cynical, you could savor it like a fine cognac. You just kind of let it wow. air out a little bit. And it's just it just keeps getting better the more you think about it because he's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I have nothing to add to that. Exactly. No, nor do I. Nor yeah. do I because I'm sitting here looking at both devices thinking, man, why can't they be friends? Why not? <laughs> why can't we be friends? <laughs> right. I'm sorry. I don't understand that is what the reply to that would be. Yeah. Hey, Cortana. Why can't we be friends? Right? Yep. Just wait till the confusion sets in. <laughs> Duh. If that uh, thing could walk into a wall and hurt itself, it would. Or it could walk itself into a glass panel at an Apple campus and have to call 911 <laughs> multiple times already yep. since opening that park. How can a company that can't have real intelligence make artificial intelligence? Mm -hmm. hmm. think, about, think about it. It makes more sense. Then you may believe. Is that in a fortune cookie you read recently? <laughs> I don't know. It just words come out. I don't know. <laughs> they, they just come out. We hope they. Sometimes they form sentences. Sometimes they don't. I don't. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right. What do you? So you've got nobody at home. Are you just going to play? You going to prestige this weekend then, Paul? <sighs> no. Um. I'm going to work on the book a lot. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff. You know, it's funny. I, I go through this from time to time. I, I, I start down paths with these articles and I write thousands of words in many cases and then they don't come out. Like I wrote a, mm -hmm. a lengthy editorial this morning, um, not meant to be like an attack on the New York Times, but there were three things in the New York Times recently that I took great exception to and they're all of the same topic and it's, it's tech related. It was one of the articles was about why dumb devices are better than smart devices. One was about how if you go on vacation, you should never bring a device with you out in the world and take pictures and stuff. And one of them was about some idiot who, you know, I, I just read paper newspapers for two months and you're never going to believe what happened next. And it's like, it's like this, I, I, I have a huge problem with the whole mentality of those things, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, they're overreactions to things. And um, I, I wrote it. And then I looked at it and I'm like, this just seems really mean maybe or like attacky. I don't really mean to go after people or after right. even a publication like the New York Times. But I, I, I sort of – so I sit on it. You know, what happens is then you get hit by this great indecision and you never end up – you know, I might – maybe I'll never read it. I don't I – mean, or I did write it. Maybe I'll never publish it. But um, anyway, I'm going to try to iron through all that stuff. I've, I actually have several of these things that I can't – it's sort of it done basically in mm – -hmm. You know, I've got the Windows 10 S thing I'm going to start working on, um, on the book stuff. Yeah. So I'll be, I'll be working and call of duty -ing. But, um, Mahedi is sick by the way. And he just pinged me. I had a couple things for him today. So actually right after we get out of here, I'm going to just write up a couple of news articles, um, and cover.
cover for him. The uh, I think the term you used was the great indecision. That is also known how we try to pick where we're going to dinner tonight. Oh, yeah. I also do this when uh, we uh, we need to watch something new on Netflix and you spend 45 minutes clicking around and watching previews and then you end up getting mad at each other <laughs> because you can't yep. find something to watch. Yeah, it's a family night in the Thorot home is, uh, is beautiful. Yeah. yeah, no, we're actually going to... Uh then to uh, another Disney on ice this evening with the kid at seven o'clock, um, which will be fun and filled with Chinese made plastic toys that I'm sure my daughter is going to want that light up and make all sorts of. So you will be seeing a live action version of like uh, Olaf and uh, yes. Elsa or whatever. Ilsa. I don't know. Elsa, Elsa the no. she-wolf. No, wait. Um, she... <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not really a Disney guy, but uh, I have a rough handle on some of the stuff. <laughs> rough. <laughs> <laughs> yep <laughs> um well have fun um i think given what you will be doing f this evening you should demand your choice of restaurant yeah i i i suspect i'm gonna lose that argument yep uh, i expect to see a picture of you with like a happy meal or something um <laughs> you know one of those things like we have like a paper crown in your head or something well the last time we went to one of these things we bought this olaf which was a snowman oh, wow. for those. I got that one right. Yep. Snow cone, and it ha it was like seven bucks or something like that for a snow cone. I was like Jesus. Sure. I was like, you know what? We're gonna take on a second mortgage here, but it was like a, a mug, and then on top, mm -hmm. so the mug was only maybe two inches deep, and then there was about three inches of of shaved ice on top of it where all the flavoring was, and my daughter was three at the time. And she cried mm -hmm. because it was too high and she wanted me to throw away the top part so she could dig it out. And I, I put like $3.50 of shaved ice in the trash can along with my dignity. <laughs> yep. So, kids. Uh, have they're, a good time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, that wraps it up for today. And today's show is brought to you by Cloudberry Lab. Check them out at cloudberrylab.com slash FRD for a free trial offer. And we'll uh, meet you back here on Monday when we're all Olaf'd out or something.